kokho ngicela kwembesa ngemthandazo imphumelelo seYesusa inqabano sila sodwa njengetinkhukhu tibanga umgqakazo Africa asi bambaneni silumbaneni sibe imbube kubete kushayana kubete emashangane nemaswati tinswati tibekwe eceleni ecebeni kubekwe sitina sekwakha impilo lephilako let us make africa a pleasant place for you me and the next Tell <laughs> Kafuna at least have now three more skills in life. Meaning, Boma got cooling over so long a child who said that I'm seven. A bad human and you supported a bad. Menebegnen. Kusetanje nte sive kuti imimango ingatini kukampunzi eza emini. Sive sarangwane, nebandu la bakete kusala eswati. Abapina ngekukululega, nekuti kubete lo nyatele lungelo la labanya eka mele kufuna lungelo lake. Sive asikumbule kuti, emapo isaboma ake na boba abela batinigele kwenta skinse kuti. Wonge umundu lene mbasa yake ingatekele wa pansi ngulomunye. Wonge umundu agasale ngekutula, nanga pande kukwe saba timbele tingatiwa. Emapo isa ngekulanzela ngekushikile la umteto ati, indo ya mundu aibenga yake umundu. Sive asichinge suwa bambise spinze suwa segele emapo isa M17 wawo. Gute emalunga lo aso sive. Osuma pisnesi ganyene bandu daba sebendago anganya telegi. Kwa nage imimango ita waka. Nemakaya akuli sebandu anangaso sandalesia emlonye. Emapo isa naso sive. Aba sebente ngebuche lwani. Nange kubambi sana kuluwa nebukala netingo titem kwato. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. You know the vibe is the beat. Down at the time is 8 p.m. It's hard for you to relax. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the music videos that I got for you. Very good evening. This is a Swatin TV News at 8. I am Natalie Sitole. Alongside Noman Kabi Zongamule, first up, let's have a look at our headlining stories. His Majesty King Imsati III has welcomed the President of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Haka Indehichilema. Government has launched a digital child protection information system. The late Deputy National Commissioner of Police, Vusi Masugu, has been described as a highly dedicated police officer. 
And now the news in detail. His Majesty Kim Sato III has welcomed the President of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Hakainde Hichilema, into the kingdom. His Majesty received the President at Mandvulu Grand Hall. The President is currently in the country to strengthen bilateral relations between the two countries. The President of Zambia, His Excellency Hakainde Hichilema, landed at the Kingdom Swati III International Airport where he was received by His Excellency the Right Honorable Prime Minister Kiyopas Lamini. His Excellency is accompanied by cabinet ministers and government officials. The President of the Republic of Zambia paid a courtesy call on His Majesty King Mswati III at Manvulo Grand Hall in Lozita, whereby the President inspected the Guard of Honor. Also present during the welcoming ceremony of the president was the prime minister, members of the cabinet and government officials, which his majesty introduced to the president. The president also introduced the Zambian delegation to his majesty the king. His Excellency Hakainde Hichilema is the seventh and current president of Zambia since August 2021. The two countries have continued to strengthen their bilateral relations over the years. Upon arrival at the palace, His Majesty the King and Ingwenyama of Emaswati and His Excellency the President held bilateral talks where discussions focused on mutual interest at bilateral, regional and international levels took place. The Kingdom of Eswatini and the Republic of Zambia share cordial bilateral relations attached on historical ties and mutual respect. While in the Kingdom, His Excellency is expected to visit a few local places. On the news, I am Polile Mazia at Lozita Palace. Government has launched a digital child protection information system. Speaking during the official launch of the system at the Royal Villa Zulini, the Deputy Prime Minister Tema Masu says data will now be captured in real time by the Social Welfare Department, ensuring speedy processing of cases. With the support of the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund and Bantuana World Education Initiative, government has established the Primeros Child Protection Information Management System. The Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masu says the system shows government's commitment to the welfare of children as it will ensure digitized data collection, filing, reporting and overall data management. <laughs> Sikone seventa simenge tinyao zahamba. 
kutswe na yohloli case noma umbigo lo kamge langen utu semela enzaoni ase langen gube mbaba neseba ati headquarters kutsi gwente gandi ngobu petselo mshin le mfuna gegu kutuzelela gwe kutsi tonge tinsangotsi le tipetse imitseto le tinsana nintala gatle ya bandana asu sukwe shelan kufuna sile slangana from time to time sikone gubuga kutsi siku upi guna gule siku entala mtla na le tinye tinto le sitenti le idolo ubugu mtseto uwe kshushumbisa human trafficking act akfanele siku kwe shele ngoba lo gule siku entala mtla kutasi sita kutsi mtlambe Sisheshe sikone kukutuola njenga lungu ni vile nje kutsi baga chenda in family. Na abubane kwa abu lugu kwa ka primero lugu tau seventa tinvali njalo. Leo tukufaga mini ningwane yebanduana. Gepa nase skuli ile mtlambe la mtla stabe stala. Samba kangane kangane. Nye tsemba kutsi na kupeli mnyaga le slano. Sitabe si pake mena kulu le zinga le si kona kututukisa inshala ka sheba nvana. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Funds Officer in Charge, Afshin Pasi, says this system will address issues of data management at the Social Welfare Department, which is why they support it. Uh, what is important about Primero, as uh, our colleague mentioned, is that it gives us real-time access to information. It helps us monitor the progress of uh, support which is given to uh, uh, children and victims of gender-based violence. And it also provides us with tools. Uh, to understand the trends, which would be very helpful in any prevention activity we might have. The Deputy Prime Minister's office has said 80 social workers have been trained on using the system. For Eswatini TV News, Nelson Wendlangamanda with Mbongwa Dube Zulwini. The Ministry of Public Works and Transport has warned the public against establishing informal businesses and close proximity to road reserves. Principal Secretary in the Ministry, Tulani Mkalipi, says this poses a, a serious threat to road users. Mkalipi says his ministry stands ready to assist entrepreneurs so that they are allocated land for their businesses. Minister of Public Works and Transport says it is concerned about the increasing number of informal businesses trading on road reserves. This is through a statement by Principal Secretary Tulanim Kalipi who says there is further concern about unauthorized access roads. Mkalipi reminded the public that business trading in close proximity to the road is strictly prohibited since it poses a serious threat to road users. Mkalipi said this is not only dangerous but also illegal. He encouraged aspiring entrepreneurs to engage local authorities and the ministry in finding suitable areas where businesses can be located. The ministry says road reserves are for guardrails, road signs and street lights. It also said road reserves are also reserved for possible future road expansions. Mkalipi said road reserves have a total width of 38 meters for main roads, measuring 19 meters from the center line of the road on either direction. He further encouraged all members of the public to seek approval from the ministry in the event they need to construct business structures, signboards, and access roads. For Swatini TV News, Temgosima Vimbela, Mbabane. The Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Trade Director, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Mlulegi Lamini, says initiatives like 21 Days of Yellow Care, which is inclusive of Yellow Care Doers Masterclass program, come in handy in training young entrepreneurs. Lamini said this during the Yellow Care Doers Masterclass program workshop. Through the Yellow Care Doers Masterclass program, MTN Swatin Foundation is going to give 10,000 Malangen to 10 businesses. The full amount is 100,000 Malangen. MTN's Eswatin Chief Executive Officer Wandi Lemchale elaborated upon the initiative. 
there's no good bone and check okay after you've gone through this training is that some of you must come back and give us a testimony of what they have done out of this training because as Funzi J, we see the ambitious cards. You must take the skills that you're getting from the experts that you'll be finding here and take it into your various businesses and start a business that will then become successful and in the near future, the business coming out, we see ban ban what kind of business out of this master class and we saw that business drive and become successful. The Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Director, Hamlule Klamini says, it is through stakeholders like MTN and Swatin that the ministry can be able to implement its mandate of creating jobs, among other things. You are here as ambassadors in your communities, in your respective communities, and we hope that as you go out here, you will share the knowledge that you would have acquired here for the benefit of others so that they get our corner as a country that we've got a youth that is now knowledgeable on business. So we see a temple of Utsigonga, of Utau Kubega, since they see figure a good thing and see the fruits of uh, this uh, initiative. Junior Achievement Director Petile Masilela and Ignectas Country Director Wanda Kumado says the Yellow K Duas Masterclass Program by MTN Swatin comes in time when there are limited jobs opportunities in the country. This is the kind of um, empowerment that we'll be bringing to the young people, uh, helping them to recover economically from the issues that we are currently facing as a country. The people that need to go to the school must change their mindset. Go to school, as you are learning, think how you are going to apply what you are learning out of the four walls of your class. The Minister of Commerce, Industry and Trade is also in a process of training 40 young people in the country perishing about entrepreneurship. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune Langamanda, with Tandogu Ulem Zuli Zulini. The Macmillan School's Poetry and Writing Competition has been officially launched. Macmillan Education and Swatini Sales and Marketing Manager Mangoba Slongunyane says the company budgeted 150,000 Malangini for the competition. The Macmillan School's Poetry and Writing Competition is held under the theme Poetry and Technology for a Brighter Future. Macmillan Education is what in sales and marketing manager. Mangoba Slongunyan elaborate about the competition. We, we notice that as a country, our young people have, have lots and lots of talent. They are very much talented. And we believe as a company that the talent must be unleashed, it must be, it must be un uncovered and unleashed fully. So we decided to roll out this uh, poetry and writing competition to afford learners in different schools across the country an opportunity to, to actually uh, explore their talent in poetry and writing, as they shall be writing short stories as well as reciting poems. Another intended outcome is the fact that we would love to see a, a wider pool of uh, local authors. The Minister of Education and Training Chief Inspector of Secondary Schools, Martha Shong, says the competition have a positive impact on pupils. We are um, quite grateful for this opportunity because it's yet an opportunity for our students to practice these difficult skills which is so important uh, in their learning. Um, writing essentially is very important and especially writing in English because uh, it also enables uh, our learners not just to read, write in their own language and if you are able to harness uh, the use of English language you are able to read. As what in Editors Forum, JPC in Mongen Mbing says, initiatives like National Schools Poetry and Writing Competition helps people to have good command of the Queen's language and can also open doors for people in the media space. Young people, if they start at a younger age to understand how words are used, how words are applicable, they can be successful in joining our field. They can be a success in writing stories because it's easier to understand the message. It's also easier to write uh, freely without uh, the hindrance of which word applies in this situation. And so this is how I, I, I am here to encourage that young people must be free uh, to express themselves. The school's poetry and writing competition is open to all high school people in the country and it is expected to run until August this year. For Eswatin TV News, Fortune Langamanda, with Tandogu Ulem Julius Sulwini. 
The late Deputy National Commissioner of Police, Vusi Masugu, has been described as a highly dedicated police officer. According to National Commissioner's representative, Mandlam Luli, the police service had countless victories under his, in, his influence. These statements were mentioned during his memorial service held at Rest in Christ Church in Matsapa. What people gathered today to celebrate the life of the deceased Deputy National Commissioner of the Police, Vusi Masugu. The memorial service was held at Rest in Christ Church in Matapa. Masugu's first rank in the police force was in 1990, where he served as police sergeant. Masugu also worked as the police public relations officer for a decade. His Majesty King Mswati III appointed him to the position of Deputy National Commissioner of the Police in 2018. The government was represented by the principal secretary in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, John Lope. He says that the royal family is greatly saddened by the death of such an influential member of the police force. The representative of the National Commission of the Police, Mantlam Luli, says that Masugu was a very brilliant leader. The children of the late deputy commissioner praised their father for looking after them evenly. <laughs> Former yeah. National Commissioner of the Police Senator Isaac Makagula mentions that even though he was not a friend to Masugu, but he highly respected him for his amazing work ethic. Reporting for Eswatini TV is Tandugutlem Luli with Linda Lamini, Matapa. Apostle Justice Lamini has told the court that he has opted to sue Prophet Elijah Fire so that his name can be cleared of these statements said about him, which he regards as defamatory. Apostle Justice has admitted that the main issue is not money, as no amount of money can fix the complex damage caused by the statements reportedly uttered by Prophet Elijah Fire. Apostle Justice is suing Prophet Elijah Fire, 10 million Malangini, for defamation of character. Apostle Justice Lamini has told the court that the audio recording made by Prophet Mkemetelele Jafaya Mkajwa about him caused complex damage to him and his family. Apostle Justice has submitted that this audio recording was circulated on social media platforms and it was heard by people outside the Kingdom of Eswatini. The contents of the audio recording will not be repeated as they are still to be tested in a court of law. What can be said is that in the recording a man believed to be Prophet Elijah Fire accuses Apostle Justice of crimes bordering on corruption and witchcraft. Apostle Justice told the court that after he learned about the audio recording, he asked the late Bishop Stephen Masilela to help bring them together for peace talks. The Apostle told the court that this meeting eventually took place at the police headquarters in the presence of the National Commissioner of Police and other senior police officers. Apostle Justice submitted that the meeting went well to the extent that Prophet Elijah Fire apologized to him and made an undertaking to make another audio recording retracting the allegations he made about the Apostle and further issue a press statement in daily newspapers to the same effect. Apostle Justice submitted that to this day this has not happened. However, the Prophet informed them that his legal team had advised him not to retract the statements. Apostle Justice submitted that it was then that he approached the courts sought to clear his name. Apostle Justice told the court that the statements made about him portray him as a corrupt person who uses evil spirits. 
He also told the court that this has tarnished his image as a man of God who preaches locally and internationally. The Apostle now wants 10 million Malangeni compensation for these allegations. Prophet Elijah Fire was not in court on Friday. However, he is expected to be present next Wednesday when the matter resumes. Apostle Justice is represented by Stumum Mlala in this matter, while Mlulegi Nlangamandla stands for Prophet Elijah Fire. This matter is before Judge Zonke Makakula. Part Catholic College's 18 nursing students have taken the Nightingale Pledge where they promise to practice the profession faithfully. Good Shepherd Catholic College Principal Precious Lamini says this pledge is very important for the nursing profession. The Nightingale Pledge is a token of esteem for the founder of modern nursing, Florence Nightingale. Good Shepherd Catholic College Principal Precious Lamini speaks about the importance of the pledge. Adding that, among other things, nurses are expected to prioritize patients over themselves. Logo funga ge si esuende la pa umfunzi wel banga lekala sega kete at least six months no mange tu ranyana ai kali le i training mula po la pa sega tiva kona guti ka shago tinge sega ase ni sa chabula sengi ati tata gele tu funga guti nembala ni as tata le sumo moso gubang nesi imbilo ya mionge ni tata ti tingo teskulane ni tibege pambili. Good Shepherd Catholic College nursing students promise to keep the pledge throughout their careers. Langtibona kona guti ni ready to help to give care to the public. Yes, guti ni gelanje holistically ni individual gusita sive se maswati. Les fungo les sim kora kulunga lugu guti si 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 ya si ya ike timbilo ya ko etin etin zimene timbilo guti singa basi busi sone mastalegis. The students who took their pledge are those doing their first years in the institution of nursing. For Swatin TV News, Fortune Langa Manza, with Temba Shabang, Good Shepherd. And now we'll have a look at our financial markets. Standard Bank. It can be. Moving on, we'll have a look at our sports news. Former Royal Lab Pied official Vusi Masugu, who has passed on, has been described as an individual who contributed immensely in the development of Royal Lab Pied Football Club and other sporting activities within the local police academy. This was mentioned during his memorial service held at Rest in Christ Church in Matapa. In different memorial services, it is a norm that someone's positive legacy is always highlighted. Vusuma Sugu, who is no more, is a former Royal Pet player who had difference because during his memorial service, such as Luke Mavimbela, mentioned the great work that he did for the development of a club like Royal Leopards. <laughs> Musa Mechikizwane, who was Masugu's teammate during their playing dates, also decorated him as an individual with a passion about sport. <laughs> Mr. 
Pastor who played for Royal Park between 1984 to 1987. He served as the chairman of the marketing strategy at Royal Park. Reporting for Swatini TV Sports, I'm Linda Lamin with Tando Wuhlem Luli. Matapa. Sislang Semnigati head coach Dominic Guneni says he has an agreement with the players to try and make history during this period where they are representing the country in both the Afcon qualifiers and Chan qualifiers. Guneni said this when speaking to Swatini TV Sports. Sislang Semnigati head coach Dominic Guneni believes him and his team have the right platform to create history for the club in this Afcon 2023 qualifiers and upcoming Chan qualifiers. Gunene says he has an agreement with his players that as long as they are representing the country, they need to make history that will last forever. Sislang is in Group B of the Afcon qualifiers alongside Toko, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde. Despite travelling without Bongos Lamin, known as Manyovo, who plays for Sagrada from Angola, and all-star Cape Town-based winger Justice Figueroa. Kunene believes he can still make history with the squad he has. Reporting for his Saturday TV Sports, I'm Linda Lamin. Babane. That's all for now. Before we go, let's have a look at our top stories. His Majesty King Imswati III has welcomed the President of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Haka Inde Hichilema. Government has launched a digital child protection information system. The late Deputy National Commissioner of Police, Vusi Masugu, has been described as a highly dedicated police officer. And that brings us to the end of our bulletin for the evening. Up next is a weather update from myself and the crew. Thank you for tuning in. Happy weekend. your learning journey begin when you take up 21st century skills for a new world when you choose a future focused tech rich path to education when you shift to an entrepreneurial mindset the moment you choose to be an agile business leader this is where your journey really begins Regent Business School design your future Angin bingelele maswati la maashe. Angin meleni ne bamswati lo miya maglabal tuli. Ekelo ni leti puma ebu koseni. Zoele masugu uyal bingele la pinze. Ako mugele kulo tlelo. Kule ti puma ebu koseni maswati la maashe. Nda bege ngule tila sona silo semla. Ingo osim swati wa statu. Ngezikatige ibu sisa epinze vulangu ke mtetoge. Inkampani ikilok. Tororam, the connects a quala pike matsapa, the wing company tabe, kita gona gulta, lopitong swang manutlis. Imbobe mitabage glom sebendi, begat against in a finger macoscat as a silo. Boko go badon de los. Bandra bengos. Tinfna temboso. Queen as a sieve, sire in Guyama. My kittis cards must reclamate, as well as in a gum bego.
Ingonye ma emaswati ya vula nga lukse mtetfeni le fema le tauba nilkale lule lpatsega kwe kfugule no mno tuwelive le swatini. Umtimbo ya kusukumisa lomsebe ndi nga lukse mtetfeni wakala nga kuti kufige yona matupa ingonye ma emaswati kumatapa la po ikanekse kona le fema. Imbube mshaba ya vula lomsebe ndi nga kuti ichube iripon. Bapati bekelo kutularam, lungi yole ngapane lebe ibusiso asilo se mshaba, bafota sitfo mbe na yoi mbube mshaba. Inga katubege lila pobe kubanje kona tingulu umu, ingo nyama emaswa ati ya konja linge kati la yole fema ya kazelo ya nange kusebenda kwa ayo. Silo se mshaba sa kazelo wa kutilo msebendi loi ubiteti kitikiti ite malangeni, kanzi ukitite la timagete ite la paeven le swatini nange pande. Ikelok stolara milangan ngisela yetingapani le timbili logu ikelok kampani ya semeliga ne tolara mgroup yeli vila sa Singapore. Lo msebe ndilo inge nye lselo la hulmende lo kfugula neglula misa umnoto nge mva kutu ukinyabeto ngumkutlana i COVID-19 ubalelo akuma fema la makulu le tishati mpiko ngao le ngapani i tolara mlapa evika tinde Afrika. Pinze njalo ngu mpumela wakubambisana kwa hulmende kanyike na wengapane kelo kutolaram. Ingo nyama bayi busisa skaba zekala salo msebe ndi jingobe ife maisa kikita guda kutlobo le manudils gungu manje. Kanzi lesi skaba salo msebe ndi sekala sake matuba msebe ndi langitulu kwa makula mabili na mashumla mabili na gunye. Hulmende ulanyele imali linga malangeni latikizi letinga makula mabili 200 milion na malangeni. Ewa kenli kumbi le kusebende la lil ketsegi le pekeleti fektu shel. Kwa zige yu nagile nga pane i kelo kutolara miyata nyela tikiti. Leti nga makula mabili nene nge nye 210 milion ya malangeni. E kufageni mishina e kutopesha belzi nga lil page megule fema. Silo se mshaba sa kubige la gule nye ingi ngwane yalo msebe ndi liko baguti. Sishanye le slasha ya mabaleni alifema. Logu gese ya ushla la kuskumbu utyo se kuti ingwe nye maanya tele mabaleni alo msebe ndi ya sese uvula nga lukse mtetfeni. Imbube mshaba ya besa sayi kubigela lapo big banjo ya kuna tinkulu umo lebeti shikile la kufula kolo msebendi. Imbube mshaba nge kbe ninge nge kaz lapo msebendi bo banjo le kona ya slo nshange ngo mayesive. Lelo, belu lao la infu na iti kore tema biznis, ma ngoba kumalo le avla lelo ngu kuti. Ike le umpati sfunza, siku luki, cha kuti, emuge le ingwe nyama, siko luka ene sive gule sfunza. Sibaka manze ene silo skolo, si chablaka kolo ku kuba ingwe enye, ya nangu mbuta na le suguo, sibe na awe ngwe nyama la. Uto si letela na ingapa na le ngulu, le enche. Butle ba na sibuga langa pande ngo ya mai ingfana ya la ingle ngibo na mafilimini kuwa pa iskuwa pa silo skolo kutawu. Nala giti sayi kona la nje nga le siya bonga ngo ya ma. Baka manzi nge silo skolo bati beba ili nze le nga pande besole ya kwa bai bugi bai lusi le endugu iluso kwa baba chabulus na isayi kona la msa sayi fika bai muge langa tanta le tinta ha. Lekin bidi tanda tia buna gala le safi sanda silenge kasi nchitwe ni sisi haleluya. Uwekne baka manzi nchi bebanga bebanga si haleluya la manzi nga bonza bekwa bagetini. Haa, usia bonga. 
bakhona bakamanzini bayimukela silo sikhulu bathi kwabo nje abake tokukhuluma namdlala bathi awuve magama enhlakani ipho emagama esibusiso nemagama la jazilule ke njasikhombisa isibheka ape nasisuka la ngoba sibukile ukuthi emva kwale kuna lenye ledagwe inkampani futhi idagwe la kamanzini nanayo silo sikhulu lesijabula akusuthi sinemona sithinjakete tinkampana dibuye la sithade lusa silo sikhulu lenga kuveta nje boba baba baba hitela lapha silo sikhulu bathi hewu yindlela enkampani ita ukhikuta kudla bangathanza ukuthi babe incenye yale enkampani na ikhikuta ukudla bakunike bo A labathathu kuthi nabe ikhikita kudla le raw material akumane ku entrust boba bena uba ikhicite bayilethe le raw material ito ka ikhicite kudla lokuthi awenga lokuthi awedlwa ngamaswati kuze kwedlwa ngaphandle silo sikhulu labo ela bathatha bakunike bona bathi ete nje kuje ngesibhuluja asikhutulisane bathi asibambisane siphindze sihambe kanye kulolo hambo silo sikhulu injabulo elesinayo nekumukela ingwenyama lana nalo msebenzi lonako baye the wena waphakathi inkampani ikelog inkampani liyasungulwa emichigan emelika ngaleso sigaba lisibalukhulwe emelika kuleli wabeka inkhuluma okolo msebenzi i am thrilled to be part of this exciting event to officially inaugurate the kelog tolaram eswatini factory it is important and appropriate to take time to recognize accomplishments. And I'm sure we'll hear more today about the challenges that were posed and overcome in the establishment of this factory, which happened during the height of the COVID pandemic. I applaud all who played a role in this success. We commend Kellogg Tolaram for the vision to invest in the people and the country of Eswatini and for embarking on such an amazing and ambitious project. Kellogg's is an iconic U.S. brand, one that I and generations of Americans grew up with. Kellogg's began so many years ago providing breakfast foods to Americans, and it's now feeding the globe. A company that has thrived for so long must be doing something right. I'm sure it has to do not only with the innovation and with meeting the needs of consumers, but also in building a corporate ethos and strong partnerships with employees and communities where they work. The Kellogg Tolaram factory has already proven to be a positive part of the community here and has demonstrated the enormous potential of partnering in Eswatini's growth. The U.S. government is committed to advancing trade, commercial, and economic opportunities for our mutual benefit. We recognize the role business plays in creating jobs and strengthening our communities. We support U.S. companies through commercial advocacy and by advancing a level playing field for U.S. companies overseas. This is critically important. U.S. law prohibits a U.S. person or company to offer pay or promise money or anything of value to any foreign official for the purpose of obtaining or retaining business. This transparency is a hallmark of U.S. business overseas. We expect U.S. companies to deal above board, and that has contributed to their long-term success. The U.S. government has been a proud partner of the private sector in Eswatini. We have particularly encouraged firms to explore access to the U.S. market through the African Growth and Opportunity Act, or GOA. Exports from Eswatini to the U.S. market have been dominated by sugars, textiles, and garments. But the diversification demonstrated by the opening of this factory should serve as a model for what is possible. A diversified economy provides a multiplier effect, included, including much needed job creation to the benefit of Eswatini citizens and further revitalization of the economy. Please allow me to reaffirm the U.S. government's commitment to supporting the government of the Kingdom of Eswatini 
in its efforts to achieve the goals in the National Development Strategy and the Kingdom of Eswatini Strategic Roadmap. With continued economic investments, Eswatini will advance towards achievement of the National Development Strategy. And we also look forward to hearing more details soon on the upcoming National Dialogue, a process that will promote healing and stability for the entire country. This is a moment of historic importance in Eswatini. I am very grateful for the government of Eswatini's efforts, along with private and civil society partners, to embrace and encourage direct foreign investment. I look forward to participating in future ceremonies just like the one today. In closing, I'd like to ask everyone to please follow the science regarding COVID and vaccinate to protect yourselves and others. To keep business open and commerce flowing, we must together do what we can to end this pandemic. Thank you. See you, Bonga. So, to be on the bed, the Lola and Zelan and Kulu, Mogobang Lobuge, Lenkapani, Kellogg, Everatin, Le Africa, a Middle East, a take in a se Pakistan, Gerald Mahinda. First, I'd like to thank His Majesty Kim Swati III for gracing this event. And I'd like to express our gratitude to him for the enabling environment that made it possible for Kellogg's Tolerum to invest in this beautiful kingdom of Eswatini. I also want to thank the Honorable Minister for Commerce, Industry, and Trade, and the entire cabinet of the kingdom of Eswatini for the tremendous support that we have received, both Kellogg Tororam, since we first stepped in this kingdom. A little about, about Kellogg's. Kellogg's as a brand was first imported in the neighboring South Africa in 1928. That's about 94 years ago. And our Kellogg's plant in South Africa was opened in 1948, about 74 years ago. We have expanded our portfolio of brands over these years. When we entered into a joint venture with our tolerant partners in 2015, we wanted to accelerate our growth in Africa through expansion into new countries and with our foods across the Africa continent. This investment, therefore, supports this ambition. Apart from the plant that I mentioned in South Africa, we've only added three more plants over that period of 74 years, one in Nigeria, one in Egypt, and this one here in Eswatini. I must share with you some of the challenges that we received before we arrived here. As any other multinational, we engaged a consultant to tell us where would be best to invest for the next plant. I was told by the experts that Eswatini was not an ideal investment destination, which was contrary to what I'd heard. And one day in early 2019, with my former finance director, we decided to pack our bags and briefcases and come to Esotini to establish for ourselves whether this was true. A few meetings after and conversations, especially with Minister Mankoba, the Minister for Commerce, Industry and Trade, and also engaging with the Eswatini Investment Promotion Authority. The rest was history, because Kellogg Toleram and the government of Eswatini thereafter signed an MOU.
Again, as was mentioned, a couple of challenges which go further to indicate that truly this was our destination, was the advent of COVID. In April 2020, right in the middle of COVID pandemic, that is a time we broke this ground here. And 10 months later, in February 2021, we actually started production. Kellogg and Toleram have never built and commissioned another facility in that speed of time and within budget. That is truly a testament to the commitment and support that we have received from your government, the help and the direction that we have been guided in doing business in Eswatini and been, hand, and been handheld through the challenges uh, that we are, we are at, encountered. Another manifestation of this success is the success with our partners, our partners from Nigeria, and it goes to show how strong our partnership is. And I think it's only befitting that I take this opportunity to recognize our partners from Toleram, represented here today by one of the shareholders, Harish, and the CEO, Deepak Singhal, who's here as well. Our investment in the Kingdom of Eswatini gives us better market access and will accelerate Noodle's market penetration into the Africa continent as the Kingdom is strategically positioned being a member of two very effective and large free trade zones. Kellogg Tolaram uh, Eswatini is a good story to tell because Kellogg and Tolaram have a very aligned and shared value, vision, and purpose. And what the Kingdom of Eswatini government and the Investment Promotion Authority have enabled us to do is to actually further in sharing our vision and purpose and bringing it to life in this kingdom. And for that, I'd like to say a very big thank you from Kellogg and on behalf also of Tolerum. Uh, all I can say is we are here to stay and we are here for the long haul. In closing, I'd like to again, once again, thank you, Your Majesty, your government, and the people of this beautiful kingdom of Eswatini for the hospitality that we have experienced from the first day we sat here up to today. Thank you very much. Lwala Nzelang Nkulumo kwa bangu Harish Aswani, umpati wa Toralam Group, lugu inkapani ya se Singapore. Today is a very beautiful day. Today is also a very historic day in Eswatini. We have finally commissioned our plan in Eswatini. His Majesty King Swati, we feel very privileged by your presence here in your beautiful country. When the discussion started about investing in Eswatini in 2019, it was exciting for us at the Tolaram Group because it symbolized a very significant step for the Tolaram Kellogg joint venture. It affirmed our joint commitment and our growth strategy in Africa. Kellogg, I must say, has been a wonderful partner for us in our journey throughout Africa. This is the third joint venture plan that we have with Kellogg's, and we are very proud that this has been established in Eswatini. I realize that the main course is going to be served now, so I'll make this as short as possible. We are a company with entrepreneurial mindset that is agile and flexible. We witness the same culture while the Kingdom of Eswatini and its supporting authorities help build the factory structure. I would like to thank the Kingdom and its government and people for supporting a timely completion of the construction given the COVID pandemic challenges. I would also like to express our gratitude to every member who made this project a reality in the quickest possible time while ensuring that we set up 
this world-class factory here. Kellogg Kalaram is here to stay in the kingdom of Eswatini. We are committed to making a positive impact on the kingdom of Eswatini and its people. We also intend to make this a model investment in Eswatini and to also keep my promise to promote Eswatini as an investment destination in Southern Africa. <clears throat> Thank you again, Your Majesty, and the people of this beautiful kingdom for your generous hospitality. Nia Bonga. I'll try and repeat this again. Bayete Vena Wakakati. Thank you. <laughs>